Good day and welcome to another first segment of a week at the plot on this holiday Tuesday in the UK. I've just picked these beetroot, Dicheogia and turnips which are purple top Milan as you can see. These are two of our favourite varieties of these two veg so we really like them but I've really noticed that the cold that we have has really done for the the beetroot leaves um, and I'm I'm going to be harvesting most of our beetroot now and then cooking them and freezing them because I've got a feeling that once it starts warming up they might start growing and bolting so we'll go hard and the turnips as well you can see quite a few leaves have sort of gone uh, over as well and I think the turnip crop we're going to get is going to be lower than than expected but um but never mind never mind I had come down here to do a few specific jobs but I got chatting on the way down to one person for about half an hour um, and then got here and was chatting to somebody else for another sort of 10 minutes so I don't actually have the time to do the job that I was going to do today which is tidying up the brassicas because I've noticed that some of the brassicas I was saying the other week about how they'll bounce back but you know I'm noticing that that cold weather we had has really bitten some of these brassicas it's all netted up but maybe you can see some leaves in there have just dried they've like freeze dried and just dried so yeah that, this is one of the jobs I was going to sort today but we'll have a look at that tomorrow or the next time I'm down what I am pleased about is that the garlic have not really suffered too much. Some of the leaves have gone a bit yellow. You can see here, well, maybe not with my finger there, but some of them have gone a bit yellow, but the growing tips are all fine. And here we've got a broad bean. Move that away. Another broad bean there. That needs to come out that's a dandelion leaf so yeah the broad beans that aren't under cover seem to be doing okay has that one been nibbled i think that one may have been nibbled because i've got the big tripod i can't get a close shot of that but they're generally okay and the ones inside are generally an inch taller but um yeah Anyway, let me just pop into the shed. I am quite surprised at how the beetroot leaves have succumbed to this cold because, or the cold that we had a week ago, because we've had beetroot over the winter before and never have they succumbed like this, even actually when there has been snow on the ground and there's been snow on the ground for a couple of days. But I think it was just so, so bitterly cold that those leaves have frozen and then defrosted. And as I say, I'm slightly concerned that it will now think, actually, it's warmer weather and they might start bolting. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But what I have noticed just passing the soft fruit bed is the buds on the black currant and the gooseberries are really beginning to show themselves quite clearly. And, you know, again, that seems early. We're not even at the end of the calendar year yet. And, and those buds are, are showing themselves as if... What I mean when I say showing themselves, the buds form, but the particularly on the black currant, those buds are looking a bit green as if they want to open. And I'm certainly not wanting those buds to open when we've got effectively two months of what in the UK is cold weather to come and you know that means that the sap is rising as well and you don't want the sap to be rising because we want to be doing some pruning of those when it's dormant you know in dormant season I haven't looked at the apple tree yet but you know we've got things in flower you know that aren't normally in flower at this time of year but hey ho 
climate crisis, climate change and all that. Um, yeah, worrying for the future, but we just get on and do what we do on a day to day basis here. Came into the shed. There was a note in the shed for me. I know exactly what this is. We I'm quite organized with certain things and and particularly down here with the committee we're quite organized in a number of things well quite a lot of things actually and one of the things that we're really organized about is if somebody is looking at downsizing their plot because we have different size plots here we have quarter plots third plots half plots and full plots mine is a full plot though if you've been watching me for a long time you'll know that we were actually two half plots initially 6a and 6 6a and 6 before they were amalgamated back into one full plot so we've got different size plots so if someone feels that their plot at one full plot is getting too much for them they can put their name to downsize to a smaller plot when it becomes available and also conversely if somebody's got a half plot if they want further space and they're maintaining their plot well they can put their name down to have another plot when it becomes available now you're not allowed to have more than one full plot per tenant household so um, this space here that we've got is the maximum amount of space that we would be allowed to have now there are some plot holders who've been here many years decades in fact and they have two full plots and they'll continue to have two full plots until they leave and then those two full plots will become single plots well they are two single plots anyway but they won't be let again as double plots if you like um, because of the new ruling that we've got which I, I think is a really good ruling to have but yeah that, that letter is a form that I have sent to, to these tenants they said that they would like to have more growing space and they're up to about two-thirds but there's a half plot that they would like to have that is currently tenanted so we have a form saying for those tenants that want a specific plot they can put their name down for that specific plot and when it becomes available should it become available whilst they're tenants they will be offered it first so that is what that is for we have ones for upsizing ones for downsizing and ones for specific plots so yeah we're quite organized in many ways anyway i came down here to do some specific jobs I had three in my head, one of which I would do, and I've ended up doing none of those because I've got chatting on the way down and chatting on the way in. And uh, one of them, one of the jobs is to tidy the shed. Another of the jobs is to finish off the bird boxes. Another of the jobs is to tidy up those brassicas because of the, the leaves and the dehydrated leaves that are on there. But all of that will wait for another day or in fact several other days because I won't do all of those in my visit down here. My hair is doing its own thing today which is lovely. Um, if you want to have this style of hair um, just leave it really and let it grow. Anyway I'm going to leave it there for this first segment of A Week at the Plot and I will see you again very soon for further segments on Planet Vegetaria or of course this whole upload when it's ready on the 2nd of January which will be yeah as I said last week we go into a new year in this week of a week at the plot see you very soon bye good day I've decided to sort out this bed today as I said earlier in the week, there's still quite a few beetroot here, but because they've been mullered by the really cold weather that we've had, or the leaves have been mullered by the cold weather, I've decided to take all the beetroot out and harvest them and cover up this bed for whatever will come next. There's obviously weeds in here as well, which I will take out, particularly if they're perennial like that dandelion there or grasses like this grass here um, there are a few beneficial weeds there as well 
So just here is a longwort which is good for bees but we've got those on other parts of the plot and the site so I'm going to be leaving those and just covering them up and then we've got these verbascum two large one medium and there's one small here I potted some verbascum to take with us when we move in 2023 or likely move in 2023 so I don't need to pot those on but what I am going to do is just dig them up and put them into an area where I'll be quite happy to have verbascum growing next year and then cover it in cardboard there are a few there's some pansies I think over here self-seeded pansies and some more here in a cluster and again I'll dig those out and move them elsewhere but yeah I'm just going to crack on and sort this out There we are, that's the bed harvested of beetroot and cleared of perennial weeds and perennial weed roots or as many as I could find. Cleared of grass seedlings and also some cooch grass that was coming in from the sides and then I just raked it with the back of a rake flat and then put down a couple of layers of cardboard well, in fact it's only a couple of layers in this bit here but this overlaps this one if you see what I mean and these holes down here I've got some other cardboard that I'm going to bring down which isn't here at the moment I've used the other piece that I was going to use on here on a different bed and um, they're sort of wine boxes and they'll be fine to be slipped underneath these but this cardboard we're due a lot of rain tomorrow so this cardboard will obviously dampen so it will be relatively easy for me to pull it up and put the cardboard down at the weekend and then that is blotting or will be blotting out all light and yeah i'm happy to get that bed sorted i'm still thinking and looking at the turnip bed i think that one may be okay to carry on growing but this one certainly i'm glad i've done this because 
even when I was harvesting some of the beetroot, what I hadn't anticipated, because it's never happened to me before, even in the snows we've had in London, the some of the beetroot had gone soft. So it looked as though some of them had frozen through and then defrosted because they were just sort of squidgy. So the ones that are hard, I have kept and I will clean them up tomorrow most probably if it's raining down here tomorrow I'll come down and do that tomorrow because that water will be welcome on them to wash the dirt away and then the the dirty water can stay down here so I'm not taking any dirt home with me to go down the sink and I'll take the beetroot home and process them in the pressure cooker most likely but yeah I was surprised to see maybe 20 of what we have now maybe 15 no maybe about 20 of what I wanted to harvest had gone soft and um, yeah they're most probably still edible but I don't really fancy eating them and you know what I've chopped them up now and they've gone into our compost bin and they will give us good compost for later on this growing year will most probably be entering and emptying the Dalek which they've gone into in about March I think anyway let me just show you the beetroot that we have harvested our final beetroot harvest because that's all of them now harvested most are the size of a golf ball or larger which is fine some are considerably larger you can see there and there um, I think this is a Goldana these pinky ones are Dicciodias and the bog standard red are Biatola de Otto, which is an Italian variety. And interestingly, I think it was the Italian variety that had most that had frozen and gone soft. Um, yeah, it definitely was. By far, in fact, it was the, um, the bog standard red. Anyway, yeah, I'll clear those, uh, clean those up tomorrow and take them home for prepping. As I was putting the cardboard down, I noticed in the cardboard there are a few staples, so uh, they have come out. I obviously didn't take those out when I brought the cardboard here and took all the tape off. But yeah, that's that bed now covered. I used the other bit of cardboard on the other raised bed. As you know, the one we're looking at at the moment is an edge bed in my terms, and this one is a raised bed. And we've got another raised bed behind me, and it's on that that I put the other bit of cardboard. I've been looking out for cardboard and really not finding very much. But um, yeah, I have found some wine boxes, uh, in fact, some champagne boxes. So they'll go down here underneath the larger bits, I think. Right, that's it. We've got a rather lovely sunset up there. Can I get the sunset? Yeah, rather lovely sunset. But it's time to go home and have a cup of tea, most definitely. See you very soon. Bye. Good day. I've uncovered this brassica bed just to do some brassica cares because as I said to you they've really taken a hit in the um, in the cold weather we had. I mean look that's like dry. A lot of the leaves, the lower leaves in particular have just freeze dried. Look, I've never known that before. And this poor Portuguese cabbage. You may remember I was saying, oh, well, the brassicas will recover. I mean, look at that, how dry they are. I mean, it's okay in there, you know, so it will recover. But this leaf here, that's gone for a burton. That one's gone for a burton. That one there. And that Portuguese cabbage over there as well. But um, hey-ho, you know, all looking here. 
The Portuguese cabbage have certainly fared worse in the cold weather, which I guess if we're going to be moving up north, I should take note of because if we're moving to nearer Macclesfield or to, to West Wales in that corridor, it's going to be colder than it is in London. Yeah, and I haven't fully uncovered this one, which is the cross. You can see in there some of the leaves have gone, but even this cutting here is, is sort of fine. But yeah, I mean, I've just never, never known this before. <laughs> it just shows you that, you know, having grown all my life, either in Guernsey or in London, how the generally milder climate has um, changed or has developed my understanding of things. So when we had that really cold snap, I just didn't expect brassicas to end up like this. But look, hey ho, that's life, that's life. I'm going to sort out this bed, just take the lower leaves off, any of those dried leaves, worn leaves, leaves that look as though they're about to go over, I'm going to take those off and then pop the netting back on. You don't need to see me doing it, I mean literally all I'm going to be doing from the bottom usually, but is take, oh look they can't even come off easily taking the lower leaves off gosh usually they just sort of fall off or snap off but yeah I need two hands I'm going to get on and do that and then everything I take off is going to go into a compost bin I've done the job that I came down here to do which was tidying the brassicas taking the lower leaves that had gone over off it's like three quarters of a bucket there from these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plants. And I was saying that this Portuguese cabbage will come back. That one over there as well. But when I was talking to Vivi the other day, she was saying that some of her brassicas are virtually liquefied, and I didn't understand what she meant. But if we come down here, you can see how green this is here. We come down, that's spongy, and then come down here, look, you see how soft that look? So that has frozen through, this stem has frozen through, that one over there as well. And I'm not sure they are going to come back, these two. Oh, I mean, it's just, yeah, look, look. So why did those two succumb? None of the dazzling blue kale have succumbed. And these two Portuguese cabbage here, I've squeezed their stems and they're all fine. Oh, honestly, just gets more and more dumbfounding to be honest. Never in my years of growing have I experienced brassicas being harmed like this. So maybe others have in, in other parts of the country and in, in places where it's colder. I know Greta, she can't overwinter brassicas and I sort of know why now if, if, you know, if this happens. So a Portuguese cabbage less resilient. Hmm. Hey ho. I'm going to do a little bit of weeding in this bed before I put the netting back on, but first let me just pop into the shed. Yes, on this first day of a new year I am a bit dumbfounded. Hadn't expected those stalks to have frozen through and defrosted, but two of them have. Hey ho, hey ho, uh, how do your brassicas do? I mean, you know, around the world, because of course we're all in different zones and different climates and different temperatures. So yeah, it'd be interesting to know how yours fare and whether you can overwinter brassicas. 
maybe it will get to a point where in the UK we can't overwinter brassicas. I would have thought if that is going to be the case, it's going to be several decades off and maybe it wouldn't be an annual thing. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. You know, that is that's the climate crisis in motion. You know, that that is a visible sign to me of the climate crisis, the drying of those leaves, the, the freezing of the stems. I mean, maybe it's just never happened to me before. Maybe it's happened to other people regularly and it's never happened to me in London or Guernsey before. And, and it's just unusual, but um, maybe it's usual in other places, I don't know. But one thing's for sure, we've got a new calendar up, 2023. There'll be a turn of that in a month's time and I'm sure in a month's time I'll be saying where has the month gone because I'm saying where has 2022 gone? I really don't know. I really don't know. It's, um, yeah, yeah, where has it gone? But anyway, that's going to be it for today. I'm going to do the weeding in that bed and then cover it with netting again. There's lots of other jobs to get on with throughout January and I hope to get on with those. And whatever you're doing on this first day of January of 2023, I hope you enjoy it. I hope everyone has a good year. I hope everyone has a calm year. I mean, you know, so many challenges in our lives as a society and as an individual member of that society, I know. So, so many challenges. One thing that did make me smile this morning was hearing that Scarborough had cancelled their fireworks. Um, they usually have a firework display, which many people do, which I just think is madness in these days. But anyway, they cancelled their firework display last night because an Arctic seal had turned up in their harbour, I think, and they didn't want to scare it off. So they cancelled their fireworks. And I just hope that more councils, more governments, more individuals think about these things and have more care for wildlife and for nature because, to be frank, if we don't have more care, much, much more care for nature and wildlife, there will be no human race. You know, the planet will go on and it will change and we as a human race will die out, which I don't think would be a particularly bad thing anyway. I mean, you know, we're the only beings on this planet that do that shouldn't be here. We have no benefit to the planet. Everything else on the planet has a purpose. And our purpose, what is our purpose? However, there is growing to be done and tidying to be done and seeds to be sown. I'm going to open up the seed box in a couple of days, maybe even later today and have a look at what's in there. And just on that, no, we'll leave that to the first segment of next week. We'll leave what I was about to say until next week. Look, whatever you're, you're doing today or this week or this month or this year, please think about our environment, think about others, try and be calm and take care and don't be selfish. And when I say that, I'm not talking about those people who are ultra selfish. I'm talking about people in the moment. Give grace to other people. You don't know what they're going through. And I know sometimes it's difficult, you know, you're rushing and you want to get things done and people are holding you up. But, you know, their their situation and what they're going through may be invisible and just a sort of caring bit of kindness to them may be the thing that makes their day, their week, their month or even their year. Anyway, Happy New Year to you all. And I hope we can all have a beneficial, productive and calm 2023. See you soon. Bye.